Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the podcast and today I'm going to give my review of Monday Night Raw. Now a couple of things before I get started, or at least one main thing, is I know one of my episodes that came out recently, the audio was kind of distorted. We're kind of probably going to have the same thing here just because I'm in the middle of a hellish storm right now, so just bear with me and I do apologize in advance if you guys can't hear, just heard the thunder hit. So uh, just bear with me here. And hopefully we can get through this episode. But uh, like I said, welcome to the podcast. And today I'm going to go to my Monday Night Raw review. Starting off the night, we have Gunther. Gunther comes out to the ring. Gunther has a segment. He is introduced by Ludwig Kaiser. Kaiser introduces Gunther. Gunther walks down to the ring. He grabs a microphone. He acknowledges the crowd. Gunther talks about his accolades that he has had since he's been with WWE. Gunther also promises a historic run with the heavyweight title. A bigger historic run than he had when he had held the Intercontinental Championship, which, by the way, was one hell of a run by Gunther. After he says this, Randy Orton's music hits. The crowd erupts. Orton comes down to the ring, grabs a microphone. He says he praises Gunther and says that the heavyweight title looks good around his shoulder. Orton asks Gunther, though, if he really did beat him in the King of the Ring tournament. Orton says Triple H says that he did not beat Orton and says that there will be an Orton versus Gunther, too. After that, Orton calls out Gunther. Orton says the fans need a reincarnation, if you will, of another Flair versus Steamboat rivalry or rivalry. Orton, after that, says that it will be himself versus Gunther at Bash in Berlin. A couple things I want to say about this, man. Number one, this was a big deal. Number one, to see Randy Orton. Obviously, Orton is attached to Friday Night SmackDown. Obviously, he's in a storyline with the Bloodline, and he's also been working with Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens to try to take down the current bloodline. So to see Brandy Orton on Monday Night Raw was a big deal. Like I said, the crowd erupted. Raw was live last night from Baltimore, Maryland. The crowd was awesome last night. Um, But as far as this matchup is concerned between Orton and Gunther, man, I'm all for it. I think the matchup between Gunther and Orton is obviously a rematch from the King of the Ring. Obviously, there's some unfinished business there between Orton and Gunther due to what happened at the King of the Ring, which Orton had mentioned in his promo. Um, But I'm going to be honest with you all, man. I know a lot of people were actually against Priest dropping the belt to Gunther. Um, But to me, honestly, I think Gunther's going to do a hell of a job with that World Heavyweight Championship. He is, and I'm not trying to disrespect Damian Priest or anything else like that or the fans of Damian Priest. I think Priest did a great job with the Heavyweight title. And he was a fighting champion, hands down. But if I had to look at somebody as a prototypical World Heavyweight Champion, I would have to say Gunther. Gunther gives off that old school vibe. And, you know, I was watching Monday Night Raw last night, and it kind of it did give me vibes of Ric Flair or a Bruno San Martino, which, don't get me wrong, those are some high-listed names that are, you know, Hall of Famers above Gunther. And I'm not saying Gunther's not a future uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, I, I, but I put him in that category... And the aspect of him carrying himself the way he does and, you know, really representing that World Heavyweight Championship. And I know this this Bash at the Berlin event coming up late August, I believe it's August 31st, it's going to be a big deal, not only for Gunther, but WWE. And what better way to do that is to have Gunther walk out in his home crowd, if you will, and that's the way that they were presenting it last night, as Gunther walking down to the ring carrying the World Heavyweight Championship. So this is a big deal, man. WWE, like I told you guys, is firing on all cylinders. And this was a great back-and-forth segment between Gunther and Orton. Definitely looking forward to that matchup at Bash at Berlin. Moving on from that, we go into our first official match of the night. It is Ludwig Kaiser versus Sheamus. This is Kaiser's first match back since injury that he sustained from Sheamus. Uh, the match itself was a good match, man. It was a back-and-forth matchup between Kaiser and Sheamus with Kaiser trying to keep, it the, pa- uh, keep the pace of the match. Kaiser and Sheamus both exchange in the middle of the ring, but Sheamus hits a white noise on Kaiser for a near fall. Sheamus then applies a clover leaf, but the hold is broken. Pete Dunn is here. He tries to attack Sheamus, but Sheamus attacks Pete Dunn. Kaiser then hits an enziguri on Sheamus, but Sheamus hits his signature brogue kick on Ludwig. Kaiser pins him for the three, and your winner of the match is Sheamus. Looks like Sheamus has some unfinished business with Pete Dunn. Moving on from that, we have a Damian Priest segment. Priest comes out to the ring. He calls out Finn Balor. Priest talks about the Judgment Day and what the Judgment Day meant to Priest and that it was his family. Priest talks about SummerSlam and what happened at SummerSlam due to the fact that he lost the belt with the help of Finn Balor. Finn Balor then is shown on the Titantron. Finn says that Priest let down the Judgment Day and that Finn Balor has been patiently waiting for another opportunity to become World Heavyweight Champion. 
which he pretty much sat in the sidelines for a year. Finn then introduces the new Judgment Day without Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest, and that new addition has Liv Morgan in it. So it, like I said before, man, with the SummerSlam review that I did, looks like there's going to be a Judgment Day, but a new vamped Judgment Day. Now, I thought the Judgment Day was going to implode. I, I thought the Judgment Day was no more, but it looks like Finn Balor is kind of taking the reins of the Judgment Day and has a new Judgment Day with himself, J.D. McDonough, Carlito, Dominic Mysterio, and it looks like the new addition of Liv Morgan. Now that Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio are pretty much on the same page at this point. So again, it looks like there's a new Judgment Day without Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Lyra Valkyria versus Shayna Baszler. I thought it was a decent match. It's a back and forth matchup between Valkyria and Baszler with Baszler keeping the pace of the match. Valkyria then hits a power bomb on Baszler for a near fall. Valkyria then hits an enziguri on Baszler. Sylvie Starks and Deville then attack Valkyria. The match turns into a no contest. Damage control is here. They end up attacking Zoe Stark, Shannon Baszler, and Sonya Deville. Moving on from that, we have a CM Punk segment. Punk comes out to the ring. The crowd erupts. Punk talks about SummerSlam. He talks about having a smile on his face. And the reason why he has a smile on his face because he, like he said, nothing was guaranteed. It wasn't even guaranteed that he would show up last night at Monday Night Raw. Punk then calls out Drew McIntyre, but he is interrupted by Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins comes down to the ring. Seth Rollins looks pissed off, especially what happened to him in the matchup at SummerSlam where he was attacked by CM Punk with a GTS. Rollins then wants to, says he wants to fight Punk. McIntyre then is here. He is in the crowd. McIntyre talks about beating Punk. He also praises Punk at the same time, but McIntyre holds up the uh, CM Punk's bracelet that has his wife's name and his dog Larry on it. Punk gets irate. He rushes after Drew McIntyre, but Seth Rollins is still in the ring, and he is blindsided by Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed devastates Seth Rollins with multiple splashes off the top rope. Looks like Rollins has a couple internal injuries from those splashes. Bronson Reed was trying to be controlled by WWE security as well as other WWE staff to stop the onslaught, if you will, that Rollins, uh, that Rollins was getting or receiving from Bronson Reed. But if you guys remember at the beginning of the show, Bronson Reed actually had a face-off, if you will, or a conversation with Adam Pearce and says that he wants to be the top dog of all and he wants to be in the conversation and be in the main event scene. But he believes Pierce was, really wasn't looking at him as a main eventer, so Bronson Reed told him that if he wants to be a main eventer, then he's going to have to do things and take matters into his own hands. And that's exactly what he did last night with the blindside attack that he gave to Seth Rollins. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It's a tag team matchup. It is the Authors of Pain versus the New Day. Um, I thought it was a good match, man. It was a back and forth matchup between the New Day and the Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain were keeping the pace of the match. But out of all of a sudden, Odyssey Jones comes down to the ring. He was picked up by NXT. Now he's on the main roster. And the New Day end up hitting a roll-up, pin for the three. And your winners of the match are the New Day. After the match, you can see Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods celebrating the win with Odyssey Jones. After that, you can see Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston celebrating with Odyssey Jones backstage. It seems like Odyssey Jones had a friendship with Kofi Kingston that Xavier Woods did not realize that was happening. So it looks like it's a possibility that Odyssey Jones might become a new member of the New Day. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. Again, it's another tag team matchup. It is Austin Theory teaming up with Grayson Waller versus Miz and R-Truth. This was a good match, man. It was a back and forth matchup. Miz and R-Truth were keeping the pace of the match, but Theory ultimately hits the finish. Pins for the three, and your winners of the match are Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Hats off to Austin Theory and Grayson Waller for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. This is a glorified grudge match. Some unfinished business here between J.D. McDonough and Damian Priest. This was a good match, man. It was a back and forth matchup between McDonough and Priest, with Priest keeping the pace of the match. But Finn Balor interrupts the match by attacking Priest. The match turns into a no contest. The, judge, the rest of the Judgment Day come out to attack Priest with Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio are stomping out Priest, and then all of a sudden, Rhea Ripley's music hits. The crowd erupts. Rip, Ripley rushes down to the ring. She attacks Liv Morgan, sends a message to Dominic Mysterio, and she also attacks J.D. McDonough. So it looks like Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley are going to be kind of sticking together here after the fallout they had with the current Judgment Day. 
Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is EO Sky versus Sonya Deville. Originally, this was supposed to be... Um, oh, I can't think of her name, and I can't believe I cannot remember her name. <laughs> um, originally, it was supposed to be another member of Damage Control. I'll say that. I can't believe I forgot her name. So please forgive me on that one. Um, but it was EO Sky versus Sonya Deville. It was a decent match, man. It was a back-and-forth matchup. Deville was keeping the pace of the match. It was saying... Kyrie Sane attacking Stark ringside. Sky then hits a moonsault to the outside. And then Sky hits another moonsault at the top rope, pins for the three, and your winner of the match is EO Sky. And the original person that was supposed to be a part of this match that was not due to injury was Dakota Kai. That was the name that I forgot. So for all you guys out there be like, oh, I can't believe I forgot the name. I just give me a minute. I'll get the name. It's been a it's been a while. It's been a long day. But uh hats off to EO Sky and Damage Control for getting the win in that matchup. Now, moving on from that, we go into the main event last night of Monday Night Raw. It was the in-ring debut of the Wyatt Six versus the Creed Brothers and Chad Gable. Um, like I said, this was the first match or in-ring debut of the Wyatt Six. It was a good match, man. It was a back-and-forth matchup, but the Wyatt Six were keeping the pace of the match with the Wyatt Six ultimately picking up the win in the matchup. Hats off to the Wyatt Six for getting the win in that match. A couple of things I want to talk about with Monday Night Raw, man, before I get out of here. And, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to have to sound like a broken record here, man. Raw and SmackDown, the main roster right now is firing all cylinders, hands down. And I also want to apologize, like I said earlier, for the crazy storm that I'm having here. You guys are probably hearing a little bit of uh, noise in the background. It is severely raining out here. Um, but besides that, um, you know, like I said, man, the main roster is, you know, firing all cylinders. I mean, the, the SummerSlam event was awesome. It was outstanding. We also get the return of the original Tribal Chief, I should say, with Roman Reigns attacking Solo Sokoa. Obviously, SmackDown this week is going to be a big deal as well with Roman Reigns returning to SmackDown um, this week. It's going to be a big deal. Obviously, everybody wants to hear what he's got to say about Solo Sokoa and this new newly formed bloodline, if you will. Uh, but Raw, I mean, like I said, man, Raw is fantastic. I, I think Raw is firing all cylinders, you know, obviously continuing storylines with the Judgment Day that went from SummerSlam into Raw last night. Obviously, the in-ring debut of the Wyatt Six was a fantastic, just a fantastic deal. And, you know, they had multiple video packages for the Wyatt Six. And come to find out, you know, they played a great video package of the Wyatt family, the original Wyatt family debuting with... Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper, and believe it or not, it was 11 years to the day, according to Monday Night Raw, that Wyatt family debuted, and they had a little bit of a video package and everything else, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they actually debuted 11 years ago in Baltimore, Maryland, so it was a big deal. It was a big deal for not only you know the fans of Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family, but also a big deal for the people that knew Bray, and especially a big deal for Bo Dallas. I mean, Bro Dallas has a lot of weight on his shoulders with the Uncle Howdy, but I, I think with what he's trying, I mean, obviously he's not going to have the same feeling, if you will, if it was for Bray Wyatt. You know, those are, a lot, those are big shoes to fill, with all due respect to Bo Dallas. But I'm liking what the Wyatt Six is doing. I, I like the, the unexpectancy, if you will, or the unexpected of what they're going to do. And they keep you on your toes. I mean, obviously there's been, you know, a lot of storyline here or conflict, if you will, between the Wyatt Six and Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers, but my thing is, is what is next? You know, you see one half of the Wyatt Six get involved in the match last night, but you also have Nikki Cross, or a.k.a. Sister Abigail, who can also have in-ring matches, so again, I mean, there's a lot of things up in the air, including Uncle Howdy, there's a lot of things up in the air for the Wyatt Six, and they're just firing on all cylinders right now, man, and I think, you know, you know, I hate saying this, but I, I've said it for the past couple of weeks now since I've covered Raw, AEW is in trouble. Now, you know, obviously I'm still going to cover Dynamite and Collision, but even with the, you know, small Dynamite news that I have, I mean, there's a lot of speculation and rumors right now that the Lucha Bros will also be leaving AEW and possibly joining the main roster or NXT, which would be a big, big deal and a crucial hit to AEW in that roster. Um, you know, even though, like I said, I'm not going to go into full detail with AEW because this is my Monday Night Raw review, but it is a big deal. Um, for the Lucha Bros probably leaving, possibly leaving AEW and joining the main roster. It's a big deal and a great addition to either NXT or the main roster. It's a big deal. But um, like I was saying, man, I mean, Raw, it, it, they're, you know, they're firing all cylinders, man. I mean, obviously they got some events lined up. They got Bash at Berlin lined up. It's going to be a great show. You're going to see Gunther, you know, most likely have his first title defense at Bash in Berlin, which is going to be absolutely awesome to see. And like I said, I'm not trying to 
disrespect what uh, Damian Priest has done with that belt. He's a fighting champion. The reason why I said that, you know, Gunther gives off the prototypical World Heavyweight Champion look is because of how he carries himself. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I know I, you know, I said he has a lot of resemblance to Bruno San Martino and Ric Flair, those kind of guys. It's because of the how he presents himself to the fans and what he does in that ring. And, I, you know, he's a very old-school wrestler. He can be a mat wrestler, but, you know, everybody knows Walter or Gunther, if you will, for the devastating chops that he lands on his opponents. And Ric Flair is also known for the same thing. Bruno San Martino, the reason why I brought up San Martino is because you can see those historic runs with, you know, with Gunther. I mean, I'm not thinking anything. I mean, again, if you're going to compare apples to oranges, you can look at Roman Reigns and what he did with the World Heavyweight title before he lost at WrestleMania 40 against Cody Rhodes. I mean, he was breaking records. Um, but, you know, I think Gunther, you know, I think he is going to, I'm, I'm hoping he does have a historic run with that World Heavyweight title. I think Gunther is, is not even hitting his prime yet. I, I think Gunther is going to have a lot of great matches down the line and down the road for him and have multiple title runs and multiple, multiple title opportunities for Gunther. And right now he's the current World Heavyweight Champion, and rightfully so. Um, but again, there's still questions that still need to be answered. What's next for the Judgment Day? What's next for Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley? That's one of the biggest questions out of last night is what's going to happen with, you know, Priest and Rhea Ripley. I also heard through the grapevine that um, there might possibly be a trade. You know, Sami Zayn and Jey Uso possibly going over to SmackDown. Now, again, it's just speculation at this point, but it has been discussed and it has been rumored that there might be a trade here between SmackDown and Monday Night Raw. You know, with the return of Roman Reigns, obviously he's going to need the support um, to go up against this new bloodline for him to get back to the head of the table and become once again the tribal chief and he's going to need some reinforcements going up against the likes of Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa and Jacob Fatu I mean those guys the new bloodline man they are some powerhouse competitors over there man this is not just Solo Sokoa that Roman Reigns has to worry about man there is some dogs if you will over there in that new bloodline man and they are hungry and Roman Reigns right now currently is on an island all by himself. So he's going to be looking to recruit possibly Jey Uso and Jimmy and possibly Sami Zayn. I don't know if we factor in Cody Rhodes into that or not. Um, but the other big question, too, as far as Cody's concerned, is what is next for Cody Rhodes? You know, is he going to be a part of this bloodline storyline still after WrestleMania 40 to align himself up with Roman Reigns to finally take down the new bloodline for good? You know, that's a lot of questions going into Friday Night SmackDown, but... Um, like I said, man, Raw was great last night. Raw was a top-to-bottom good show, and I'm loving what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm genuinely enjoying it. I think Raw is firing on all cylinders. I think the main roster alone right now is firing on all cylinders. I know there was other announcements, too. There was an announcement today about, you know, obviously NXT and NXT going over to the CW October 1st. I think it's a big deal not only for WWE but NXT. Um, I think Shawn Michaels even mentioned that NXT might be back on the road. I know they got two shows. I think their first show is going to be at the Allstate Arena, I believe, with special guest CM Punk, obviously, you know, being in Chicago. And they have another show that's going to be in St. Louis, Missouri, with a special guest of Randy Orton. Obviously, Orton's from St. Louis, Missouri. So it looks like NXT is going to go back on the road, and who knows what's going to happen, man. You know, I think right now WWE did hit that reset button, and they're, they're, they're full steam ahead right now. And uh, AEW better watch out, man. I'm not saying there's any tribalism here. I don't have any tribalism. Like I told you guys multiple times, I want both companies to succeed. But right now, WWE is just levels above right now of what AEW is doing, hands down. And hats off to you know Triple H for you know doing what he's doing. Triple H knows exactly what he's doing. If you guys know anything about Triple H, you just go back and look at what he did for the NXT Black and Gold brand. You know, and I've had those conversations with my wife, and it's just like, man, you know. I don't know about y'all, but it's like one of those things where, like, did I take it for granted? No. But just looking back on what NXT Black and Gold and what Triple H and Shawn Michaels did back then and what they brought to the table, man, and all that damn talent that walked through those doors at Full Sail University, man, it's just un incredible talent, incredible storylines, incredible matches, man. I mean, Undisputed Era. I mean, get the hell out of here, man. Malachi Black, or Aleister Black, I should say. Gargano and Champa matches that were just barn burner matches. Matches that will live on in NXT history. I mean, Andrade, I mean, Keith Lee, Adam Cole. I mean, it just the endless amount of talent that was on that roster for NXT, man. It's just, I mean, it's crazy. 
You know, so, I mean, hats off to Triple H, man, because he, he's taking what he did with the black and gold print for NXT and using that same concept in a way and working with the main roster talent that are just incredible right now. And like I said, man, WWE are levels above right now of what AEW is doing. And AEW better watch out. But like I said, man, Raw was a solid show. I'm definitely looking forward to SmackDown this week. And uh, hopefully I can give you guys a review of SmackDown uh, for this Friday, man. I'm definitely looking forward to SmackDown. But uh, with that being said, this is my review of Monday Night Raw. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.